The Red Wings. Um, you haven't given up. No, and and if anything, the dream is still alive. To me, yes, I, I they're very much in play, because here's the bottom line, guys. And I know again, I know that we're new to this, especially like with the play or the whole playoff thing here. But remember this: for as bad as the Wings have been in the last ten games, they're three, five, and two. So are the Flyers, the exact same record. So therefore, as bad as it's been. They didn't lose any ground to the Flyers. Mm -hmm. Over the last 10 games, so they won three. They didn't lose any ground. They have a game in hand with the Flyers. They're two points behind. It's still on serve, Flannel. It's still on Ah! serve. And that point they got Ah! at Florida was (laughs) crucial. It was an incredible point to get because nobody, especially me, especially me, nobody was giving them any chance. I didn't think they were going to get a point no. in these three games. A point. No. Yeah. They got one. It put it back on serve. Flannel, I, I get it. Like, if you're not, if, if I said flannel, bet the flannel Sam family grocery money on the wings making the playoffs. I couldn't tell you to do that in good conscience. I couldn't. I'm not saying it's a get right. But flannel, it's more in play than people think it is. Well, you have, you have a point in that that point was huge that the Red Wings got over the Panthers and that. The Red Wings, they're doing their best to fuck their season, but fortunately for (laughs) us, so are the Philadelphia Flyers. That's, I mean, 3-10-1 and in the last 15. That's fucking your season. But the Flyers are 0-4-1 and in their last five, and as you mentioned, 3-5-2 and in their last 10. And the Red Wings do have a game in hand. I just, I feel a little uncomfortable saying that what the Red Wings have done, especially if you, like, extrapolate this to the month of March as being on serve. They've been absolutely awful. But would I necessarily count against them to overtake Philly? Absolutely not. I think that's 100% in play, and I actually agree with you on that. I mean, just look at the Red Wings and look at Philly. The Red Wings are better than Philly. They've got more top-end talent. They've got more depth. I would say defensively, they're uh, they're, they're, they're not Well, they used to have more depth. Well. They used to. Now, that that is a stop short for me. They used to have more depth. Well, Remember, that's what I was told. I'm but, still not uh, seeing it. But your you're messiah, Alex Debrinkit. One goal in the last 15 games. Not good. And Not I'll good? T- I'll tell you what, too. What, what game was that goal in? That was in the uh, the cap- the uh, Capitals game. Yeah. Okay, fine. And he was one of the biggest reasons why you've been on this terrible streak streak when, uh, when Dylan Markin was out, too. So, sure. I know that you were up here after that game slurping to brink it, but I thought that that was malfeasance. He's been awful in these 15 games. He's a guy that has twice scored 40. And on a 15-game sample size, he's at like a just over four, five goal in the season pace. Yeah, and he also carried you for 15 games to start the season. He was carried a big it. reason carried why. why... So, so he's got to be a 70-goal guy, you're telling me? He's got to be a 70-goal guy? He can't be like a 27-goal guy. That's not what you're getting. I'm just saying that in these, he was a big reason why you guys, why the, why the Red Wings had that cushion. I will give you that. I will never deny that. But he was also a big reason why the Red Wings are playing the way that they are right now. But... My message to Alex Debrinkit right now, the only thing I can say, because you are 100% right, the Red Wings are still alive, and most of the tough part of their schedule is in the past, and they managed to steal a point from the Panthers, and they managed to get a point against Washington, and we'll see what they do against Tampa. My message to Alex Debrinkit is just simply, WAKE THE FUCK UP! <laughs> Jesus. I, I, I need you to hear that, Debrinkit, if you're watching. <laughs> I need you all to get shocked out of your seats. I'm shocked. Because that's what Alex Debrinkit needs. He's on like a five goal. He's, he's got one goal and one Jesus goal and six points in 15 games. That's not good enough. And he still has time to write everything. He does. We all agree he still has time to write everything. And this Red Wings team still has time to make a successful season. After so, so, the, so the guy that's going to come in at 30 goals again, the guy that's going to, it, it's his fault. What about what about Gostasphere and all these Wait. other guys that I hear about all the time? The double digit goal guys, yeah. right? No, M- most scoring depth in the league, right? Where have they been? You're one hundred. Why are you not right. saying, "Hey, where you guys been?" No, we're still doing this thing out here. Here's here's why, and I'll I'll give you that. Comfer, he's got four points in the last fifteen games, one goal. That's unacceptable as well. Daniel Sprung has been so bad, he's been on the bench. That's not acceptable as well, given the fact that he was one of your best depth pieces for the better part of your season. Alex Debrinkit is a star like that's what he he was the only all-star on this team this year I'm not saying that you have to uh that you're not going to go through some stretches some some rough stretches I mean Alex Dabrinkit 
even during some of his best years, maybe not his 40 goal seasons, but even last season does have a tendency to be a little bit streaky. But my point is that his poor stretch or his um, all nearly goalless stretch has coincided with the Red Wings being 3, 10, and 2 in 15 games. That's I, eight points in 15 games. Go ahead. I will, I will agree with Flannel on that part that he needs to wake the fuck up. Like he he needs to he needs to wake up. This is the guy you brought in here to push you over the hump to be your goal scorer to be that guy. So he needs to be him down the stretch for sure. Uh, Elgato, this dude is bipolar. Sean, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> bruh. Am I crazy though? I don't think you're because crazy. to break it. What if he goes on a heater right now? Like like I said. The way that you put it, I didn't necessarily agree, agree with Neil, but the fact that the Red Wings can overtake the Flyers, I agree a thousand percent. There's still time. I just, I don't want to see another, what, four or five games where Debrinkit hasn't scored. Uh, well, at least a goal. Even six points in 15 games is bad. That's an under 41 point per year pace. <laughs> so, Debrinkit, you've been, you've been sleeping. Comfer, you've been sleeping as well. I, I didn't forget about you but there's still a chance for them to write everything because as we've always said, as long as the Red Wings make the playoffs, it is a wildly it's successful It's pass season. fail. It's a wildly successful season. We'll all be overjoyed with it. We'll forget all about this stretch of, of, of poor hockey, but they have to get out of it though. That's, that's the thing. And they got a tough one tonight at Tampa, but then they've got some home games. They got one against Buffalo. They got one against, uh, they got one against Washington. I know that they have one down the road. Oh, they got the Rangers as well. I, I almost... That's going to be tough as well. They have one to get. They have a home and home against Montreal later. And the Flyers play tonight against the Islanders. It's a coin flip game. Yeah, it's a pretty much an even betting line on it. Come on, Jack Harrington. We the, need your team to come yeah. through. Absolutely. I like how we're not even worried about the Islanders anymore. No, they're so they <laughs> they're so bad. Yeah. Um, then it's they a go on. Race. They go on a four game road trip. They're at Buffalo, at Columbus, at Montreal, at the Rangers, and they finish home against New Jersey and Washington. So, you know, they have the schedule edge, but then again, they played Chicago and Montreal and lost 9-2 to two combined yep. in the last two games. So things aren't going exactly great right now for them either. And that's the thing about Philly, and DMAC has, DMAC has reiterated, this, re, reiterated this constantly on the show. If there's one team that's kind of playing above their talent level that's glaring, it's Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. It's actually been a phenomenal coaching job by John Tortorella, who I don't like, but pr hey, Credit, credit where, where credit is due, but if Philly falls on their face even more than they have been their last five games and continue to lose, nobody would be shocked by that. But then again, I don't see a ton of evidence other than schedule easing up that the Red Wings are going to turn it on either. They could. They've got the talent to. It's just they've played so poorly in the month of March. I uh, just got the alert here. Jake Wallman will be back in the lineup That's today. Big. That's after, huge. Yeah. After six-game injury absence. So then sit Petrie's ass down, yes. please. Please. Wait a minute. Remember when they signed him? No. Spenny. He's, he's a liability. That's not what I was told. Remember when they signed him? Nope. Don't remember. Nobody said that he was going to. Like, everybody knew what? what he was. We didn't think it was going to be this bad. Yes, that is true. Nobody said he was going to be a godsend, but nobody thought he would be this bad. That's not... Remember, I got killed. I'm like, I... Let's see, 35, yeah. like... And they're like, how can you question it? Bring yeah. him home. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I guess I... But again, that was... Okay. That was some hype for sure. So. All right. That's all, that's all I wanted. We, we met in the middle there. Again, I... I didn't think he was going to be great, but I did not think he was going to be unplayable and literally the cause of like four losses <laughs> in, the, in the past five weeks.